your way into the room. We're about to start worship officially. Um, on your feet, if you will, please. And we're going to sing together a song called Every Day. And I'm going to invite up my friend B. She's going to help lead this one for us. She's going to start us off. Then we're going to join her. And then she's going to end the song. Just her. You'll see why. <laughs>
Well, God is good. And all the time, I invite you to be seated. Well, once again, welcome to worship. If we haven't had a chance to meet yet, my name is Pastor PJ Moline, and welcome everybody who's here in person and those of you who are joining us online. Uh, I have a special treat to be able to hang out and, and jam with the band tonight, and we have a special treat for our message today. Uh, Pastor John Martinson is going to be giving the message. He's what you would call a son of first. Have you heard that term before? Son of first. That means he he grew up in this church, was raised in this church, and then heard God's call to be a pastor and went off and and was a pastor for many years. Now he's retired, and he does supply preaching for a lot of churches and worship leading, and we're blessed tonight to have him be part of our Can I Say That series as he's talking about prayer tonight. So thank you, John, for being with us. And as we start our worship, we do it with our invocation. I invite you to follow along and repeat after me. God be in my head. God be in my heart. God be on my left. And God be on my right. We enter into worship with a spirit of of humility, realizing that we're only here by God's grace. And thankfully, we can say anything to God, knowing that God loves us and, and, and offers us his grace. So I invite you to follow along with me in our confession prayer. The congregational parts are in bold. Loving God, whose touch can heal the broken places of my life, touch us today. God of peace, whose spirit of peace can quiet our spirits of confusion and despair, reassure us today. Forgiving God, whose call to repentance promises grace upon grace, place your mercy on our souls today. We know that as soon as we offer up our confession, God offers us forgiveness. Because of what Jesus has done for you, I can say confidently and with joy, your sins are forgiven. May God enliven your hearts through faith and live in you through the Holy Spirit. Amen. At this time, I invite up Isla, who's going to share our scripture reading for today. Please stand as you are able for the gospel reading. The gospel reading is from Luke chapter 11, verses 1 through 5. Once Jesus was in a certain place praying, as he finished, one of his disciples came to him and said, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. Jesus said, This is how you should pray. Father, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. Give us each day the food we need, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And don't let us yield to temptation. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Good evening. <laughs> you got it? A little look. Okay, okay. I had trouble with the mic on Sunday, so I'm just making sure it works tonight, so thank you. Uh, last Sunday, when I, uh, just before the start, service started, I was asked if, how long are my sermons? And I said, well, the first sermon I, on internship, I did a sermon that was 45 minutes long. That's not the whole service. That was just my sermon. And I realized it was way too long, and as I was leaving the church, there were several people who pulled me aside and said, too long, too long, too long. (laughs) And a member who was a judge pulled me aside, and he said, young man, very edifying, but it was way too long. And then I hustled off to my office and got a dictionary and looked up what edifying meant. And it meant educational, so. But tonight we talk about prayer, and let us all pray. Almighty and most gracious God, you've given us many, many gifts to help us on our journey of faith. But one of the greatest gifts you've given us 
is the gift of prayer. And with that gift, you promise to hear us and to respond to our prayers. May the words of my mouth and meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. The gospel passage you heard tonight was from Luke. It was the Lord's Prayer. The other gospel that contains the, the account of the Lord's Prayer is in Matthew. And Jesus is asked by his disciples, teach us how to pray. So what I'd like to do tonight is look at some of the things that scriptures tell us about prayer and look at specifically some of the prayers that Jesus himself said. And then I'll share some of my own prayers. We hear in scriptures that prayer is to be persistent all the time. And time and time again, and even in the parables and in, in other things that Jesus says and teaches us, um, he says, pray without ceasing and pray all the time. We pray for many different things. We pray for peace. We pray before our meals. We pray for comfort. We pray for knowledge. I remember when I had uh, important tests in school, I prayed that I did well on those tests. And uh, when we are faced with getting a new job, we often pray for guidance in getting a good job, that our interviews go well, that our boss likes us as we present who we are. But the times we pray when we feel lost and scared and frightened. And those are common prayers that we all pray at different times. We pray when we face a challenge that we aren't sure what to do or what's going to happen. But Jesus tells us to pray all the time. There are times in scriptures when Jesus goes off by himself to pray, often to a lonely place or just to be by himself and with God. And what's frustrating with me when I hear those, when I read those accounts, is I want to know what Jesus is talking about to his Father when he goes off by himself to pray. But prayer was part of his life. It was part of his own faith. It was part of how he did his mission and what he was supposed to do. In Matthew's Sermon on the Mount, we hear, Ask and you will be given. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened. Again, those are promises that Jesus gives us about prayer. Jesus also tells us parables about prayer. One is uh, with a widow and an un unrighteous judge. And we are told the judge neither fears God nor man. And this widow kept coming to him, asking for him to bring justice to her, and he would ignore her. And he kept coming back and back and back and back to the point where the judge thought she was kind of a pest. But he finally granted what she was asking. We were a parable of a, two men who go up to a temple to pray. We were told one's a Pharisee, and one's a tax collector. The Pharisee begins, God, I thank you that I'm not like other people, thieves, rogues, murderers, and not like this tax collector. And he goes on to brag about what he does in his faith life. The tax collector then prays, and he simply, we are told, he simply bows his head and says, God, forgive, God be merciful to me, a sinner. And the parable tells us that the tax collector is the one who went home justified, whose prayer was heard and acknowledged. The gift of mercy. I spent eight years in the field of chemical dependency, two years at the North Dakota State Hospital as a counselor, fourth and fifth step counselor, and six years as a counselor for Lake of the Woods County in northern Minnesota. And I used a lot of material from a fellow by the name of Father Joseph Martin. 
And he was a Catholic priest who had been given permission by his church to serve full time in the field of alcoholism recovery. And he had a lot of different things that he, he says in his books, in his films, in his, in his videos. But one of them, he, he talked about what our purpose on earth is. And it simply is, God has not gone on vacation and pointed either you or me to be in charge. God did not put us on earth to judge people. Now, we may be pretty good at it, but that ain't why we're here. We live in a community of people like you and me. We all have our faults. We all have our struggles. We all have our fears. But I'd like to look at some of the specific prayers that Jesus prayed. And we have record of those in, in scriptures. And all of these prayers were done during Holy Week, the week before he was crucified. The first prayer was simply, Father, if it be your will, let this cup pass from me. But let your will be done. Jesus knows he's in, he's in Jerusalem. He knows full well that he's going to be executed, put to death, and buried in a tomb. And he asks, Father, if it be your will, Take this cup away from me. Don't let this happen. But then he says, if it's your will, let it be done. In the Gospel of John, there's one whole chapter, chapter 17. That's the prayer that Jesus prays. And one verse in it says, Father, I ask you not to take my people out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. Jesus is saying, don't take all challenges away from us, from you and I, from the people of God. But he's saying, as they face those challenges, protect us from the evil one. Another prayer of Jesus. Again, this is during Holy Week, and this is on the cross. As people are nailing spikes into his hands and feet, he says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. In times of excruciating pain, his concern is for the people around him. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Another prayer on the cross. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus knows he is going to die. It's the first time in his entire ministry and in his entire life that Jesus feels separated from his Father. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It's the first verse of Psalm 22 in the Old Testament. But if Jesus can feel that way, there are times we also feel that way. And of all the things that we can experience as, as people, as humans, I think the experience of loneliness is the most painful. But even in the midst of that kind of agony that Jesus experienced, God was with him. God had not forgotten, and God was there. There are times things like that, that happen to us, and we aren't sure what God's thinking. And even though scriptures promise us that God will always be with us, there are times God can seem pretty far away. Another time is when, again during Holy Week. And this is where Jesus gives thanks for the meal. And he said it, he's, selling a, he's celebrating a meal with his disciples, the Passover meal, the Seder meal. And we are told Jesus Christ took the bread, gave thanks, broke it, 
and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. In the same manner also he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. In scriptures, words mean a lot. And the word remember, we hear, do this for the re remembrance of me. The Passover meal is a meal of remembrance of the people of Hebrews being released and set free from bondage in Egypt. Remember this meal, remember this day. This was the, the Seder meal, that's, what's the, that's what the Seder meal is for. But Jesus changes the Seder meal and talks about an, another kind of remembrance. If we take something apart, it's called, to, you, we can use the term dismember. We take it apart and we destroy it. To put it, things back together is to remember to remember us, to put us back together when life gets hard and scary and frightening and painful. To put us back together also, to put us back together in relationship with God in Christ. To make us whole again and to make us complete again. Do this for the remembrance of me. We put, when Christ is putting the meal of, of remembrance out there for us, it's there for us and the promise of helping us when things don't go the way we want them to. So how do we pray? Is it a certain stance? Is it a certain way of saying things? No. We can pray in silence. We can pray aloud. We can pray wherever we are. Whatever we're doing, we can pray. In a, with a lot of people, we can pray by ourselves. How many know the prayer, now I lay me down to sleep? Pretty much everybody, right? When we, when we uh, had little kids, we taught them that prayer. And we'd hear them pray, now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake... I pray the Lord my soul to take. Well, we had a hard time with that last part of the prayer because we were hearing our little kids, our son and daughter saying, Jesus, well, wait a minute. We weren't comfortable with that, so we changed it. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. Your love be with me through the night and wake me with the morning light. And our daughter, who was... Uh, has always been kind of headstrong, and still is, um, didn't like going to sleep. And after we'd say that prayer, we said, now, if there's anybody you want to pray for, you can do that afterwards. And she had a list that went forever and ever and ever, the way of her staying up at night. And we finally decided, oh, well, 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 we'll try and put some limits on our daughter and say, well, you can say this many names tonight, and if you want some more names, you can save them for tomorrow night and add them and do that. So that worked out pretty well. But that's still the prayer that I use when I go to sleep at night. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. Your love be with me through the night and wake me with the morning light. That's the prayer I still use when I go to sleep at night. And I add things. I add, God bless my wife and I, our kids, their husbands, grandkids, and those I name by name. And my mom. mom my mom was 95, 99 and a half years old on Monday. And I pray for her and her friends and the friends of her family. And then I add siblings, nieces and nephews, Cousins, aunts, and uncles. 
Then I'll go on and add people I've met during the day. People who asked me to pray for them. People I know who are going through tough times. My neighbors, I'll, I'll pray for them by name. My classmates from high school and college and their families. My colleagues. People going through grief and loss. I'll pray for our nation. I'll pray for political leaders that they do what's right and proper and protect our nation and our country. And sometimes I fall asleep doing that. And in the morning I have another prayer. Now the shades of night are gone and the morning light has come. Lord, may we be thine today. Wash all shade of sin away. Help me to do the things I should to be to others kind and good in all I do in work and play to grow more loving every day. Those are prayers I learned as a kid. I still use them. I think my dad, my dad wanted me to learn the morning one in Norwegian, and I was too young. I, couldn't, I think I could try it now, but I haven't done it for a while. The Old Testament and New Testament tell us stories about how God cares for us and about how God cares about us. And one of my favorite passages in Scripture is from the book of Exodus. And to me, it's, it's a passage that's full of the gospel. It carries over to the New Testament without any problem. And it's the account where, where Moses is tending his flock for his father-in-law Jethro. And he comes across a bush that's on fire. It's burning, but it isn't being consumed. And, Jesus, or, and, and Moses nears the bush, and, and a voice from the bush says, Moses, take the, feet, take the sandals off your feet, for the land on which you are standing is holy ground. And Moses, is, and Moses encounters God there. And this is the passage. This is what, what God says to Moses and to us. I have seen the afflictions of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cries because of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them. That's the promise of being set free. That's the promise of a God who cares for us. And in the Old Testament, God then sent Moses to go to Pharaoh and tell Pharaoh, let God's people go. In the New Testament, God sent his own son to us to bring us new life and to set us free from all the things that make us to be afraid. Even the power of death. It is God in Christ who has come to set us free and it was made of us his church. And I said earlier that one of the gifts that, that were given by Christ is the gift of prayer. And with that gift is the promise of our prayers being heard and our prayers being answered. And there are times that God uses other people to answer the prayers we pray, just as there are times that God uses us as answers to the prayers other people pray. Prayer is a two-way street. We pray to God, God answers, and sometimes we are part of that answer. And sometimes we're not even aware that happens. But with the gift of prayer, God also gives us the promise of new life and of being heard. To be delivered, to be rescued, to be set free. But prayer, Scripture never promises that we're going to be without struggles. God never promises that life's going to be fair. What Scripture does promise us 
is that in at all things that happen to us, God is present with us. The gift of Emmanuel, the gift of God with us, the gift of wholeness and completeness, and the gift of life. How do we share those gifts with other people? Amen. Glory be to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Thank you for your words this evening, Pastor John. At this time, I ask that you stand up. We're going to sing together a song called Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. Right now, can you close your eyes? Keep them closed. When we pray at our house, sometimes I say, all right, you guys, settle down. We're going to pray. And I say, picture Jesus. Picture his face. Picture him smiling at you and holding you. Let's p picture Jesus as we sing this together. Oh, can... soul, my soul, are you weary and troubled? No night, no dark that our eyes cannot see. There's light so bright as we look to our Savior. Life more abundant and free. Whole life more abundant and free. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory. Your word, your light is leading us on. Our hearts can hear you, Heavenly Father, calling us all to your Son. Calling us all to your Son. You say, turn your eyes upon Jesus.
I invite you to remain standing as we turn our hearts towards prayer tonight. I love that the disciples felt like it was okay to say, uh, we don't know how to pray. <laughs> Can you teach us how to pray? If you've ever struggled with prayer, you're not alone. And for this time of prayer, I wanted to teach you a simple prayer. It doesn't have to be complicated. Just two steps. Thank you and help me. And so I'd like to practice that with you and just start it off. I'll start us and then give you time to say the prayer in your own words. So first, God, we pray thank you. Thank you so much for this church. Thank you for Pastor John and his words tonight. Thank you for a safe place to gather, to learn, to grow, to worship you. And God, in our own words, I invite each of us to pray silently in their hearts the ways that they're thankful to you. And God, we pray, help me. Each of us has needs in our lives, and we see needs in our world around us. And so we ask for your help. And I invite each of the people here today, those joining us online, to, to pr lift up your prayers of, for help in your own words. God, thank you for listening. Thank you for responding. Remind us that you invite us into this conversation each and every day. And tonight we pray thank you and help us and trust that you will respond in the way that is fitting and the way that we need most. We pray this together in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite you to be seated. Each week in worship, we, have, we offer not only our prayers up to God, but we offer our offerings, signs of gratitude for what God has given us, and it's a chance for us to share in the work that God is doing. And there's lots of different ways that our offerings are making a difference. Uh, we had a fun one this past week, trunk or treat. Uh, we talk about and think about giving money, but this past week, we gave over 2,000 pieces of candy. <laughs> and it was just a neat way to serve our community. And people decorated cars and were just out providing a safe opportunity for our community to have fun. So if you are a part of that, thank you so much. And there's different ways that we can give to God through our church. You see those ways up on the screen. And I want to give you a moment to prayerfully consider how you can give your very best as a sign of thankfulness to God and to be part of what God is doing. So take a moment to pray and then we'll pray our offering prayer together. I invite you to join me in our offering prayer. The words are up on the screen. Pray with me. We might not feel comfortable saying it out loud, but many of us have a hard time with giving. We fear not having enough. We hold tightly to what we have. Yet you invite us to participate in your generosity, trusting in you to provide more than enough for all we need. Receive the gifts we offer to you and grant that our whole life may give you glory and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And would we close this time of prayer using the words that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We sing together the blessing. The first time we sing through the blessing is our blessing to you. And then, yes, please hold hands with somebody near you as you bless each other tonight.
Thank you so much for worshiping with us tonight. Next week, our phrase, and can I say that in church, is, I have doubts. So if you've ever struggled with questions and doubts, you're going to want to come back, invite a friend or family member to join you. A couple other announcements for this week. We have our Christmas boutique on Friday and Saturday. This is a, a fun chance. There's all kinds of cool Christmas stuff that you can come and buy, and the money goes to a great cause in our church and in our community, so I invite you to be a part of that. There's a trip to Concordia for a, a, their big concert that's going to be uh, happening on December, but the deadline to register is this Friday, November 4th, so if you're interested in going on that trip, please let us know soon. And the final announcement is we have a, a baptism session on Sunday, November 13th. So if, if you or uh, your child is, is looking to be baptized, this is a session to talk more about what that means and prepare you to celebrate that special time with our church. So those are the announcements for, for this week. And we're going to close with a song. I invite you to stand as you're able. And all the people said, amen. that's what the song is. You're not <laughs> saying amen yet. That's just the name of the song. Here we go. One, two. Worshiping with us now, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Go in God's peace. Blessed are the poor in spirit who are torn apart.